The only people who don't want to disclose the truth are people with something to hide. Participation in a process that validates an establishment that never meaningfully changes. What if that establishment doesn't want and doesn't have the consent of the governed? What if the two-party system was actually a mechanism used to limit so-called public opinion? What if there were more than two sides to every issue, but the two parties wanted to box you into a corner, one of their corners? What if there's no such thing as public opinion, because every thinking person has opinions that are uniquely his own? What if what we call public opinion was just a manufactured narrative that makes it easier to convince people that if their views are different, then there's something wrong with that or there's something wrong with them? What if the whole purpose of the Democratic and Republican parties was not to expand voters' choices, but to limit them? What if the widely perceived differences between the two parties was just an illusion? What if the heart of the government policy remains the same no matter who's in the White House? What if the heart of government policy remains the same no matter what the people want? What if those vaunted differences between Democrat and Republican were actually just minor disagreements? What if both parties just want power and are willing to have young people fight meaningless wars in order to enhance that power? What if both parties continue to fight the war on drugs just to give bureaucrats and cops bigger budgets and more jobs? What if government policies didn't change when government leaders did? What if no matter who won an election, government stayed the same? What if government was really a revolving door for political hacks bent on exploiting the people once they're in charge? What if both parties supported welfare, war, debt, bailouts, and big government? What if the rhetoric that candidates displayed on the campaign trail was dumped after electoral victory? What if Barack Obama campaigned as an anti-war, pro-civil liberties candidate and then waged senseless wars while assaulting your rights that the Constitution is supposed to protect? What if George W. Bush campaigned on a platform of non-intervention and small government and then waged a foreign policy of muscular military intervention and a domestic policy of vast government borrowing and growth? What if Bill Clinton declared that the era of big government was over but actually just convinced Republicans like Newt Gingrich that they can get what they want out of big government too? What if the Republicans went along with it? What if Ronald Reagan spent six years running for president, promising to shrink the government, but then the government grew while he was in the White House? What if, notwithstanding Reagan's ideas and cheerfulness and libertarian rhetoric, there really was no Reagan revolution at all? What if all this is happening again? What if Rick Santorum is being embraced by voters who want small government, even though Senator Santorum voted for the Patriot Act, for an expansion of Medicare, and for raising the debt ceiling by trillions of dollars? What if Mitt Romney is being embraced by voters who want anyone but Barack Obama, but they don't realize that Mitt Romney might as well be Barack Obama on everything from warfare to welfare? What if Ron Paul is being ignored by the media, not because, as it claims, he's unappealing or unelectable, but because he doesn't fit into the pre-manufactured public opinion mold used by the establishment to pigeonhole the electorate and create the so-called narrative that drives media coverage of elections? What if the biggest difference between most candidates was not substance, but style? What if those stylistic differences were packaged as substantive ones to reinforce the illusion of a difference between Democrats and Republicans? What if Mitt, Wa Mitt Romney wins and ends up continuing most of the same policies that Barack Obama promoted? What if Barack Obama's policies, too, are merely extensions of those from George W. Bush? What if a government that manipulated us could be fired? What if a government that lacked the true and knowing consent of the governed could be dismissed? What if it were possible to have a real game changer? What if we need a Ron Paul to preserve and protect our freedoms from the government? What if we can make elections matter again? What if we could do something about this? From New York, defending freedom every night of the week.
Does the government work for us or do we work for the government? Is the best government really the one that governs the least? Can we ever have a government that stays within the confines of the Constitution? If the Constitution was written to keep the government off the people's backs, why is the government all over us? Tonight, whatever happened to freedom? Understanding where we go from here should start with understanding how we got here. We are the free and independent people of the United States of America. We are free because those who preceded us fought a war against a person who was then the world's grandest king and who presided over what was then the world's grandest empire. The Founding Fathers risked, as they like to tell us, their lives, their fortunes, and their sacred honors for the freedom and independence they won and we have inherited. But they were not saints. And initially, their cause was not popular. From the records available today, the people who measure historical trends have concluded that in 1776, only about one-third of Americans supported the revolution. About one-third of Americans opposed it. And about one-third of them didn't care. When I first looked at these numbers, I thought, in 1776, this was the grandest fight for the greatest amount of freedom for the most people at any point in history. So who could possibly oppose it? And who in their right mind could not care? Fast forward to today and ask, who could possibly support a government that regulates everything from the strength of the water pressure in your shower to the size of the toilet bowl in your home to the thickness of the leather in your shoes? Who could want a government that punishes people for speech, that lets its own agents write their own search warrants, that fights wars just to keep the military industrial complex busy, that debases all you own by printing worthless money and putting it into the stream of commerce, that gives away more than half the tax dollars it collects and that despite express provisions the elections in the tomorrow to the country, in Florida permits the president to lock up if you ain't never done anything in your whole life perhaps the colonists who didn't tomorrow's care, the day they freely chose their from here on out to tomorrow and from every election from now on if Ron Paul don't win the revolution were afraid to you take might as well to challenge authority just go ahead and pack your bags and for the unknown. start knocking on doors because what that's happened. what you're gonna have to a do sleep in the, the street pushed the use the curb for a pillar toward freedom and the freedom you know, that they chose no were home. pure. I mean, after we won Can the revolution, really and wrote the, any more taxes? the new government Can you and the really afford class to pay for groceries the way they are right now? Think as they wished and say what they thought. Can you really afford to pay five dollars a gallon for gas again? They could you know it's they coming, right? Or choose not to worship. They ain't gonna shut up about it. Can you really afford that? That troops would never enter their homes. That only a tank of gas and you got twenty-five gallons. And that the government could not You're spending a hundred dollars right at a hundred dollars for a tank of gas a or a little more at, at their fault you know, five dollars a the neutral jury. All this was guaranteed Come to on, the first folks. generation of Americans and to the Wake up and smell the roses. That would be us because much we of got it one chance denied, left. One, and I've been telling you all this for a while. And because Americans came to believe, even the one, one third that were afraid and the one we third got that didn't one care, hope that these rights are ours Boy. by virtue of our humanity. Whether you are believe we that we are the highest order of natural selection, are we going to starve to death? believe as I do, that we were created by God and His image just plain old killed off likeness. because you know in your heart people are going to get tired of this being broke and they're going to go to corrupt crime and corrupt to feed their family. Are a part of our and hell, I don't blame them. And you can't blame them because they're hungry. And yet, they have been denied. The poor is going to be poor, poor, that and the middle class is going to be abridging the freedom broke. of speech. In fact, they enacted the Alien and well. Sedition Acts, which punished speech that was critical. We don't of have no more time, people. This happened because the time people is were now. To challenge the tyranny the time is now to wake up America, and see what's going on. America, the our freedom have come not from someone attacking and us. See but from the government ignoring the Constitution I know it's not, it's and not the majority nice to look at. I don't letting like it them either. get away with it. The worst I hate it more than anybody else. Were not those ratified by the states, I like to see my flag stand up and, and hang proudly. Where all three branches of government my country too. agreed to look the other way. When good it breaks my heart nothing, to see it like this. Bad things happen. This should break yours too. Well, what shall we do? We should challenge Much love authority, people. no matter who is Heads in charge. Up. We should challenge the majority the word out, please. whenever it curtails anybody's freedom. We should side with freedom no the matter what the government tomorrow says. Here we in should Florida. vote out of office those who push the government outside if the Constitution. If you ain't never done anything no in your whole life, they just brought home. 
tomorrow's we day, make the government afraid of us. from here on out afraid to tomorrow, and from because every election from now on, us. if when Ron Paul don't win, tyranny, but when the government you might the as people, well there is liberty. just go ahead and from pack your bags and freedom. start Everybody's knocking on doors, freedom, because that's what you're going to have to do. So long, Sleep America. in the street. Use the curb for a pillow. <laughs>